Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for this session of the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. The series is designed to help K-12 educators reimagine education with Blackboard teaching and learning solutions. The K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series harnesses the power of our K-12 community of academic leaders, teachers, and other experts to provide relevant, real-time, on-demand, and ongoing professional development opportunities for K-12 educators. My name is Katie Gallagher, and I'm the Senior Product and Solutions Marketing Manager for Blackboard, uh, Blackboard K-12 Teaching and Learning. And I'll be serving as the moderator for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series. Thanks to Colleen Smith from our K-12 marketing team, who will be helping to answer questions today in the chat. Uh, we will be joining you for the K-12 uh, Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series this fall. We're always open to new ideas for topics for the series, so please let us know if you're interested in presenting a future session this spring. Email me at katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. Each webinar in the series will be recorded. Search for the K-12 Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on the Blackboard TV YouTube channel or go to tinyurl.com slash bitsk12. Um, you'll receive the recording from, from this session and the presentation slides in PDF form a few days after the webinar by email. In addition, you'll also receive an invitation to participate in a professional learning community online designed to augment the series and create an avenue for ongoing collaboration and dialogue. So please accept this invitation and participate in the new online PLC. As you can see, we have many exciting professional development sessions lined up. Uh, don't forget to join us next Monday for Putnam County Embracing 21st Century Learning with Sam Brooks. Uh, go to bbbb.blackboard.com slash k12bits uh, where you can register for Monday session or any session within the series. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to download the new BBK12 Live app. Uh, every session in the series uh, comes through the app, and it also houses uh, recordings of the best sessions from Blackboard World this summer. So it's designed for on-demand anytime PD, so please be sure to take advantage of it. I'm very pleased to welcome our speakers today. Uh, we have Leslie White and Jamie Linton from the North Carolina Virtual School. Leslie Fester should also be joining us a bit later. She's traveling to iNACL today um, and hope many of you will be joining us here as well. I, I'm, I'm already here. Um, they will be presenting us uh, with, with uh, a session called School University Partnership for Preparing and Supporting K-12 Online Teachers. Uh, the North Carolina Virtual School Public School and Lenar Ryan University have developed a school university partnership designed to invest in building capacity for K-12 online teachers. This partnership contributes to the field of online learning in critical areas, including quality preparation of K-12 online teachers and research into effective practices for pre preparing and supporting K-12 online teachers. In this session, a representative from each institution will share their efforts to develop and sustain this collaborative partnership. Specifically, presenters will highlight the joint online teaching practicum and share findings from research into effective methods for preparing and supporting uh, K-12 online teachers. Leslie White, we're very pleased to have presenting today. She teaches um, OCS, American History for the North Carolina Virtual Public School and serves as an instructional leader for the Teachers in Training and Practicum program. She's been teaching for 10 years, six in the classroom, and four online. She lives in Cary, North Carolina with her husband and two daughters. Dr. Jamie Linton is an assistant professor of education at Lenar Ryan University in Hickory, North Carolina. Jamie developed and coordinates Lenar Ryan's graduate program in online teaching and instructional design. She graduated uh, from the PhD program in teacher education from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro in the summer of 2014. Jamie received a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Western Carolina University in 01 and a master's degree in curriculum instruction from Appalachian State University in 05. 
Previously, she held positions as instructional technology facilitator, staff development coordinator, and instructional coach for Newton Conover City Schools, an elementary teacher for Hickory Public Schools and Marietta City Schools in Marietta, Georgia. She's a regular webinar presenter for Simple K-12 and a Simbaloo PD Pro certified educator. Jamie was recognized by the National School Board Association as one of the 20 to watch educational technology leaders for 2012-2013. Jamie was also selected for ISTE's Making It Happen Award by NCTIES in 2013, an award that honors outstanding educators in instructional technology. Jamie is a co-founder of NC Ed, a bi-weekly Twitter chat for North Carolina educators, and uh, Ed Teach, a bi-weekly ch Twitter chat for pre-service teachers. Jamie serves uh, the educational community in numerous capacities, which include serving on the leadership team and professional development kitty, uh, committee for the ISTE uh, Teacher Educator Network, chairing the Communications Committee for the North Carolina Association of Colleges and Teacher Educators, serving on the Digital Learning Task Force with the Friday Institute, and serving on the edit Editorial Review Board for the Journal of Online Learning Research. Jamie is married with two beautiful children, ages seven and three, and will soon be expanding her family further through adoption. Finally, um, Leslie Fetzer is a professional learning coordinator at NCBPS. As the 2012 National Online Teacher of the Year, Leslie made over 70 appearances speaking at conferences, webinars, leading workshops, etc. Her hope is to dispel myths about online education to show how all students can succeed with personalized, differentiated online instruction and to empower teachers to teach online and to blend learning in their classrooms. So we're very pleased to have such decorated educators leading us today. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it to Leslie, Jamie, and Leslie. And um, I also think that this group might be presenting at iNACL this week. So I'll also ask that you plug your sessions that you're presenting in this week. So thank you so much for joining us, and um, can't wait for your presentation. Thank you so much, Katie. Well, as Katie said, we're going to be speaking today about the School University Partnership for Preparing and Supporting K-12 Online Teachers. First of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the North Carolina Virtual Public School and its teachers. We'll talk about our training program and then how that has evolved into a partnership with a university to help prepare and support K-12 online teachers. NCBPS does not award diplomas. We are not a standalone school, but rather we are a supplemental program serving primarily uh, public schools, but serving other schools as well, as you can see on the screen. have some listings of those. And this fall, we are experiencing record enrollment with 58,000 students enrolled in over 150 of our courses. As you can see, the North Carolina Virtual Public School course offerings are wide, covering subject areas from AP to core classes to world languages, credit recovery, and also serving students with significant disabilities, which would be in our occupational course of study program. Our instructional models include blended, which is really more of a co-teaching partnership where a highly qualified subject teacher is paired with an exceptional children's teacher in a face-to-face -face classroom. To our fully online programs of traditional and credit recovery. And now I want to share just a few facts with you about the teachers at NCVPS. NCVPS employs over 500 teachers per semester. 
and all of our teachers are part-time. 64% of our teachers have master's degrees. 43% of our teachers are nationally board certified. And all of our teachers, of course, are highly qualified and licensed within the state of North Carolina. NCBPS is very proud to share that in the last three years, we've had three finalists and one winner for the National Online Teacher of the Year Award. And we would like to credit this, at least in part, to our great professional learning that starts with our teacher induction program, which is called the Teacher in Training and Practicum. And Leslie Fetzer, who was the 2012 National Online Teacher of the Year, now oversees the Teacher in Training and Practicum program for NCVPS. Okay, I want to spend a, a few minutes telling you about our Teacher in Training program. It is an 18-week program, which is non-paid, but the participants do receive four continuing education credits for their continuing education credits for their participation. And our program is divided into um, two sessions. The first nine weeks is an online training um, session where the teachers in training will complete coursework online. And then they go to a nine-week practicum, which is like a student teaching experience. During the first nine weeks, our potential teachers learn NCBPS policies and procedures, our expectations, how to work within an LMS, which includes Blackboard and Moodle. They will learn about NCVPS instructional design principles, um, Bloom, revised Bloom's taxonomy, the universal design for learning, and all of the different instructional designs that we incorporate into our courses. They also will learn about best practices for teaching through communication, grading, and feedback announcements and personalized instruction, which we call our four pillars at NCBPS. Leslie, quick question that, that came yeah. into the private chat. Um, it, does it cover Blackboard and Moodle rooms or Blackboard and Moodle? Well, the teacher in training programs are taught within Blackboard and within Moodle. So as the teachers are learning about teaching within NCVPS and the course content, they also get to learn about how to work within the Blackboard environment and the Moodle environment. So we offer training courses in both Blackboard and Moodle. Oh, uh, Meg, I was clarifying um, Moodle room uh, versus just plain Moodle. I was, it was a clarifying question on the Moodle product. It's just regular Moodle. Okay. Okay, thank you. So in addition to the coursework, um, as a part of the experience, the teachers in training will attend re weekly uh, synchronous sessions. So once a week, they attend a live, what we call a live chat. And this also helps the teachers in training um, see what it's like to serve in our electronic learning communities, which are similar to a professional learning community or a professional learning team, which most brick and mortar schools would call their program a PLT or a PLC. Ours are called PLC. So after successfully completing the coursework, the teachers in training are assigned a mentor, and their mentor will oversee their practicum work. So throughout the practicum, the teachers in training um, put the theory and pedagogy that they've learned during the coursework into practice as they're given increasing um, roles of responsibility each week. The mentor teacher completes a weekly evaluation, which is used to monitor the teacher in training's progress. And by the end of the practicum, the teacher in training, their experience has replicated what will be expected of them when they have their own course to teach within NCDPS. And what we teach our teachers during the Teachers in Training and Practicum program are our four pillars. And our four pillars are what we feel make an online teacher effective. 
So when they come to us, they're expecting to be learning about technology and web tools and how to's within the LMS. But what we actually are teaching is the technology skills necessary as we embed these teachings into the skills of pedagogy. And we believe that the instructional content and the student needs should drive what tools are being used and taught, not the other way around. And NCDPS calls these essential skills needed to be an effective online teacher, the four pillars. So again, there's four pillars we um, use are communication, the learning block, grading and feedback, and individualized learning. I'm going to give you just a quick version of what these four pillars look like. Our first pillar would be communication. And we believe that communication is key. So without good communication, we can't really create good content and provide the most effective feedback or individualized instruction. Teachers synchronously contact every student in addition to the asynchronous interactions within the course. So we believe that, as Dr. Comer said, no significant learning occurs without a significant relationship. Our next pillar is our daily announcements, or our learning block. In the announcements section, there are three things occurring every day. Our announcements inform, instruct, and celebrate. So the informing portion is going to let students know what's coming up. The celebrating is where we celebrate individual students. And this might be something that the students have done well within the course. We might be celebrating an academic performance. Or it might be something outside of the course. We might be celebrating something within their individual lives outside of school. It might be a part-time job that they're excited about. It might be homecoming it, at their school. It might be um, something else, athletics that they're involved in. Something to make the students feel that we are taking a personal interest in their life and that they know that we care. And also in the announcements, we are instructing each day. So we're adding a small piece of information that might be embedded into a web tool. We might use a cartoon. We might use a video. Um, but we are reinforcing the content learning that's taking place within the course. And the next pillar is feedback. We believe that grading feedback is another great opportunity to connect with our students. Every interaction with our student is an opportunity to incorporate and build those relationships. So all of our, our rule is that all coursework must be graded within 24 hours. And it must be more detailed than just a great job or a nice work. Our um, feedback is very specific. It's very directive. It's effective. And it's individualized for each student. Once the teachers in training finish the nine weeks of coursework and the nine weeks of the practicum, and they go on to work for NCDPS. We do provide additional support. Our new teachers are evaluated at a minimum of once a month, with brand new teachers being evaluated every two weeks. And we call these evaluations spot checks. The spot checks measure the teacher's performance in all four of the pillars. And the instructional leaders complete the spot check evaluation. The instructional leaders are teachers who work within the same department. So they're able to be great peer coaches. And as I've mentioned before, our teachers do participate in ELCs, or electronic communities, electronic learning communities, which is similar to the PLT or the PLC, where we collaborate and share resources. Now I would like to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Jamie Linton to share with you how she heard about NCVPS and how a partnership was formed as a result and a shared interest to prepare K-12 teachers for online and blended learning and some of the things that have been learned from that partnership. Dr. Linton? Thank you, Leslie. I Before, um, before talking about the partnership, I would really love to just reiterate what Leslie described 
in the teacher and training program, the practicum, and the ongoing electronic learning community process that is happening at the North Carolina Virtual Public School, I have firsthand experience with those pieces of the NCVPS teacher preparation program. Um, I conducted my pilot study and dissertation research for my PhD program with the North Carolina Virtual Public School and spent a lot of time in the teacher and training program. I actually went through that program myself um, with the practicum experience as well, and then I spent a semester with working with teachers in the electronic learning community process. And everything Leslie said is, is absolutely accurate. Uh, those four pillars that provide the foundation of quality online teaching at NCVPS are very explicitly woven into everything that they do to prepare and support teachers. And I've found through reviews of the literature and through my own research that those four pillars are what is necessary for quality online teaching. And NCVPS is doing that so well. After my own experience working with NCVPS, observing what they were doing um, to prepare teachers and to sustain teachers in an ongoing systematic way, and experiencing that myself, I wanted to really become a partner with NCVPS and bring their strength to my own program at Lenore Ryan University. So I'm going to talk with you now about how this partnership formed and what the partnership is about and how we feel that it supports quality online teaching. So I've designed at Lenore Ryan University a new graduate program. This is our first semester of the program. We have 18 students in the program right now, and we have several new students applying for spring 2015. The program is a Master of Science in online teaching and instructional design. And it's designed for K-12 educators, for higher education faculty, and for business leaders who are interested in quality online instruction or quality blended instruction. So throughout this program, students learn what effective online teaching looks like. They learn about quality instructional design, and they have multiple opportunities to apply what they're learning in real authentic blended and online environment. And this program came to be because of a lack of teacher education programs and a lack of professional development for K-12 online teachers. As I was conducting my dissertation research and completing the literature review component of that, I realized how very little, uh, how few teacher education programs are addressing the need for preparing K-12 online teachers. So we all know that, that online learning is growing in K-12, but we haven't been doing a great job of, as teacher educators of preparing teachers and keeping up with that growing demand for quality online teachers in K-12. So the real need for a program like this, and so we're hoping to meet that need, at least for some folks out there, either in K-12, higher education, or in the business world. And we have students currently from all three of those aspects. We have K-12 instructors in our program currently. We have college and university faculty in our program, and we also have folks from the business community who are interested in, in um, honing their skills in instructional design and in online teaching. And since the North Carolina Virtual Public School is doing this so well already, we have brought them in as a strong partner, um, and Leslie Fetzer specifically and some other folks there have really worked with us to build this partnership. Um, into something that we're hopefully going to be able to sustain uh, for a long time to come. Within the program, there are two tracks for students. The students have these two opportunities. There is one um, full master's degree track, which is a 33 credit hour track. So this is the full master's degree program. Students take uh, nine courses in online teaching and instructional design, and then they complete a six credit hour practicum. And the practicum gives them an opportunity to apply in an authentic way um, the strategies and skills and content they've learned throughout the program. In addition to the master's degree option, we have a graduate certificate option. This is an 18 credit hour learning experience and particularly um, useful for folks who already have an advanced degree. Um, so we have folks right now in the program who already have a master's degree or two master's degrees, and we also have some higher ed faculty who have a PhD in their content area and are adding on this graduate certificate option. So this is an 18 credit hour option where students will take um, fewer courses, they'll take four courses, 
in online teaching and instructional design. And in addition to those four courses, they will also complete the six credit hour practicum in online teaching and instructional design. And we're being very flexible with the design of the practicum experience. We want students to have an authentic practicum experience something that takes place in a learning environment that's very similar to either the learning environment that they are currently working in or one that they aspire to be working in as a result of completing this graduate program. And one of those practicum opportunities is a partnership with NCVPS, which I will describe in just a moment. So our goal here with this partnership, um, well, the, let me first tell you a little bit more about the program. So this is a fully online program. Students complete the program completely online. There is no residency requirement. Students do not ever have to come to campus. So you can complete the program from anywhere. You certainly do not need to be local. All the courses are offered online with a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning experiences. You will, uh, students will gain competencies and skills in designing quality online instruction and facilitating quality online instruction. Like I mentioned earlier, there is the six credit hour online practicum. The program is flexible. It's not a co cohort-based program in that students can work through the coursework at their own pace. We have some students who are moving through two or three courses a semester, and some students who are taking only one course a semester. The students are allowed to move through the, course, the coursework at their own pace. So in this partnership with Lorraine University's graduate program in online teaching and instructional design and the NCVPS uh, program that they have already built with professional learning in the TNT program, the practicum and the ongoing ELC partnership, we are modeling promising practices together through our partnership in quality online teaching and quality instructional design. And our goal is to break down barriers that folks may have about online teaching because of their past experiences. We're trying to address those head on. And that's one thing that, that the research shows is needed for new, new online instructors um, who've experienced on their own perhaps poor quality online teaching um, or maybe have not experienced it themselves but have heard um, negative opinions about online learning or maybe just are unsure about what actually is possible in an online learning environment. Research shows that those need to be addressed head on, and so we are attempting to do that through this partnership to break down whatever myths um, these teachers may bring with them, whatever um, misconceptions they may have, and then build on that solid foundation moving forward through the program. One way in which we are addressing those uh, barriers and those myths and misconceptions is right away at the very first semester in the program students take a course called Foundations of Online Teaching. And this course, we try to show students that we have a strong partnership with NCVPS from the very beginning. This course is co-taught by a faculty member at Lenora University and a professional learning leader at North Carolina Virtual Public School. This semester, Don Lorsey, who works in the professional learning department at NCVPS, is co-teaching the Foundations of Online Teaching course with one of our faculty members here at Lenora University. So we're modeling for students this strong partnership from their very first semester in the program. This course was specifically designed to address explicitly the previous experiences and attitudes and beliefs students bring with them about online teaching. The course was designed around nine myths of online teaching. And as students encounter each myth, they literally are, are reflecting on their own experiences, reflecting on their own misconceptions, uh, their own beliefs and opinions, and they're learning what, what is the truth about online teaching. For instance, one of the nine myths is related to how um, students and instructors can actually build meaningful relationships online. The myth is that instructors and students can't build relationships online. And so we're addressing that myth head on. Uh, another myth is that online teachers work in isolation. And we're busting that myth. We're showing that actually, Teachers at NCDPS have a strong partnership with their, with their fellow teachers. They work on an ongoing weekly and monthly basis through the electronic learning community process. It's not at all um, an isolated experience. It's very connected and very collaborative. So we're, we're addressing those myths head on in the very first semester by um, having students 
take this course, which is co-taught through the university and NCVPS. And I know that NCVPS is also offering um, this course designed around the nine minutes as a professional learning course for K-12 online teachers. Beyond that course, <clears throat> as students move further into the program, when they get to the practicum experience, one of the practicum opportunities allows us to continue that partnership with the North Carolina Virtual Public School. So when students get to the practicum experience, like I mentioned earlier, we have designed a flexible experience so that we can, we can create a practicum that is meaningful for each of our students, regardless of whether they may be a first grade teacher, um, a high school teacher, a PE teacher, a university faculty member, um, or a business, a business leader. So within this practicum opportunity, one possibility for students is that they actually complete um, the teacher and training program and the practicum through NCVPS. This practicum opportunity exists for our students in the graduate program who are middle grades or secondary educators or who are working to become middle grades or secondary educators. And NCVPS has courses for middle grades and high school students. That's the target population that we're seeking in, in the graduate program to work in this practicum partnership. So our students actually complete the practicum by going through the teacher and training program, the, the nine-week experience with NCVPS, and then they work in the practicum, the second nine weeks of that 18-week um, teacher preparation program. Students go through the semester-long experience with NCVPS. They learn all about what the expectations are for quality online teaching at NCVPS. They learn all about effective instructional design principles through the principles that NCVPS uses. And then once they complete that teacher and training program, they are each partnered with a mentor teacher who is a master teacher at NCVPS. These master teachers are selected because they are quality online teachers and they exemplify what research says uh, quality online teachers are and they exemplify the expectations that NCVPS has of their teachers. So our students are partnered with one of the NCVPS mentor teachers and those students complete a nine-week practicum in a real live online course. And just as in a traditional student teaching experience, our graduate students pick up responsibilities each week. They gradually take on responsibilities for teaching in this live online course. And what's really interesting about the way this practicum is designed is that NCDPS follows a specific uh, pattern during their first nine weeks in the teacher and training program, and then they repeat that same pattern of topics in the nine-week practicum. So for instance, as Leslie described earlier, there are those four pillars of, that are the foundation of quality online teaching at NCVPS. So students in those first nine weeks, they learn each week about those four pillars in addition to instructional design principles and other things of quality online teaching that are expectations of NCVPS. And as they work through those four pillars and the other expectations, then they will also um, take on responsibility for those four pillars during the second nine weeks, which is the practicum. So for instance, one week students are, my graduate students in the practicum are responsible for communicating with parents. So they'll send an email. Um, they may have virtual office hours. They may make phone calls to parents. They, they take on the responsibilities that NCVPS teachers would have, and they actually are taking on these responsibilities in a real live course while it's happening with the supervision of a mentor teacher. And then the following week, they will maintain the communication responsibilities and add an additional responsibility, such as hosting announcements. And NCVPS is, does very high quality announcements. They have high expectations for what teachers are to include in their announcements. They use their announcements, as Leslie described, to inform um, and to communicate, to celebrate student work. So our teachers in the practicum experience are doing that as well. They're grading student work, they're providing feedback, teaching through that feedback, and they're doing all of this while they have the support of a mentor teacher in a real, authentic environment. In addition to completing the nine-week teacher and training program and the nine-week uh, practicum experience in a live online course, our graduate students also write a reflective blog post each week where they're reflecting on what they're experiencing and what they're learning, uh, the challenges that they may be facing, 
in this practicum experience. They're hopefully making references to their previous coursework and how they see that playing out in real um, K-12 online environments. And they're also matched with a supervisor from the university. We have a faculty member from Lenormine University who works closely with our graduate students during this practicum. And the supervisor really serves as a liaison between the university and NCBPS during this practicum experience to communicate the expectations of the practicum to the university students and to the mentor teachers and maintain that ongoing communication and contact and make sure that everyone uh, has clear understanding of what the practicum experience will be and make sure that everyone's expectations are met. The supervisor also provides feedback on those students' reflective blog posts. And further, the supervisor conducts observations and evaluations of our students in the practicum experience. So they may gather, um, they, they will gather the emails that our students send out to parents as part of the communication component of the practicum. They may collect screenshots of announcements that um, our students have posted in their live online courses, and they're gathering all of this in order to evaluate student work in the practicum to see how well our students are actually applying what they've been learning and meeting the expectations of both the graduate program in online teaching and, and instructional design and meeting the expectations of NCVPS. We feel like this authentic opportunity um, is a huge support for not only our students, but also for NCVPS. Um, this opportunity for the practicum helps our teaching candidates learn what's expected at NCVPS and reiterates what we already know about the quality, about quality online teaching. Students get to see it modeled firsthand by NCVPS through the teacher and training program and through their mentor teachers. And then they get an opportunity in a real live online course to apply that and get feedback and support along the way. We're finding benefits from this partnership. Um, the school is part, the virtual school as well as the university are, are reaping benefits of this partnership. First, um, the quality of the work that's happening at NCVPS is improving the quality of our graduate program. We're able to offer um, a better learning experience to our students because of the expertise of the online folks at NCPPS who are sharing their expertise with us, who are partnering with us, co-teaching the course, uh, mentoring our students through the practicum, and, and leading such a quality teacher and training program. The expertise and the experience of those folks, riches, it, it enriches our program um, and strengthens it and makes it just a better overall quality learning experience than we could offer if we didn't have that authentic setting where we could have our students working with real live online teachers. And in addition, the graduate program is hopefully helping NCVPS attract and retain quality online teachers. So their student enrollment is grow growing. Leslie shared with you earlier um, the record numbers of student enrollment this semester at NCVPS. So once our students complete the teacher and training program and complete the practicum, then they have completed the requirements that are necessary uh, for employment in NCVPS. So they're strengthening our program, and we're hopefully sending them um, more qualified teachers who have not only completed um, the exceptional teacher and training program in the practicum, but also had graduate level coursework specifically in online teaching and instructional design. So hopefully we're feeding into NCDPS and improving the overall quality of their organization just as they are improving the quality of our graduate program. So we wanted to share a few principles for those of you out there who may be interested in um, developing partnerships of your own like this and to sort of talk about lessons learned um, and speak from our own experiences. I think first and foremost, the thing that makes our, our partnership work is that those of us involved in the partnership, we have a shared vision of quality online teaching. So we, we have an understanding of what quality online teaching is and the vision that I have in the, in the graduate program for what quality online teaching looks like is the same vision that NCBPS has for quality online teaching. So the same principles and strategies and approaches they are teaching in the teacher and training program and reinforcing through the ELC process are the very same principles and strategies and techniques that we're sharing in our graduate coursework. We're speaking the same language, so to speak. 
And we both rely heavily on the INA call standards for quality online courses and the INA call standards for quality online teaching. And those help us to have a solid shared foundation of what quality online teaching is. If we had a different vision of what of quality online teaching, it would be difficult to make this partnership work. But since we're speaking the same language, our students have a consistent learning experience. They're getting similar feedback from the NCDPS professional learning leaders as they are from our university faculty. And they're going to be getting similar feedback from their NCDPS mentor teachers as they are from their university supervisor. We have a shared vision, which is very important. We also communicate on a very frequent basis. So the folks at NCDPS, the mentor teachers, uh, Leslie Fetzer, who facilitates the teacher and training program, um, we're in constant contact. Don Lorsey, who's co-teaching the foundations course this semester, uh, we're all maintaining constant contact. If there are any issues, we're quick to address those with each other, um, and we share feedback on how things are going. Without that frequent communication, there could be a breakdown at any time. So it's really important for a partnership to be built on um, a foundation of frequent communication. And that's a great way to model the expectations of NCVPS, where they expect teachers to teach through communication. And so we're modeling that as well. Another key principle of our partnership is being open to feedback from each other. So we gather feedback from our students through um, surveys, midterm surveys, and end of course surveys. Students also complete course evaluations. We have multiple opportunities to gather feedback from our students. And we also just have observations that we make as instructors, as supervisors, as mentor teachers, um, as faculty members. And we're using all of that feedback that we're gathering to continually strengthen the partnership, to make revisions to courses, to make revisions to the practicum experience. This is our first semester with both the foundations course and the practicum experience. And so we've learned a few things along the way that we're going to tweak for the next time we offer the, offer the foundations course and to tweak before we put students in the practicum experience again. So we have to be open to accepting feedback from each other and then making revisions. And again, it's a, a way to model um, qual just improving online instruction where how we constantly are gathering feedback from stakeholders and using that feedback to close the loop and go back and revise to improve the overall learning experience. And finally, flexibility um, is a founding principle for our partnership. So the partnership has evolved over time from the, the very first sort of nugget of an idea into what it is now. And I'm confident that the partnership will continue um, to change and to evolve and to, and to only get better. Um, as we stick with this partnership over um, a sustained period of time and we gather more feedback from each other and from our students. And we are lucky enough that our partnership is strong. We're, we're close geographically um, and we have strong relationships and so that we can, we can work together on this and neither side is um, rigid or static, but we're, we're very dynamic and we're adapting um, as needed. So those are four um, key principles for building and sustaining your own school university partnership in K-12 online teaching. As Katie mentioned earlier, Leslie Fetzer and I will be sharing our experience with our partnership for preparing and supporting K-12 online teachers this week later at the, at the INA Call Symposium. Our presentation is going to be held on Friday um, at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's Friday, November Sorry, right, what's the date on Friday? November 7th at 10 o'clock. And our session um, is called Online School University Partnership for Preparing and Supporting K-12 Online Teachers. And we'll be sharing um, the more in-depth resources uh, that we've presented today and speaking again from our experience to help other folks build partnerships like this. And we hope to see, I hope to see some of you there. And Katie, I'm going to turn it back over to you to see if we have any questions we may be able to answer. Um, yes, there's one question uh, so far. Um, I'm curious about the, the timing and frequency of the teacher evaluations. Um, I think, Leslie, you mentioned teacher evaluations were once every four weeks and for new teachers once every two weeks. 
um, it, it seems relatively frequent. You know, does that um, does that produce a burden upon um, NCBTS leadership? How, how are you able to manage, um, you, you know, the frequency and uh, scale of that uh, type of, of teacher evaluation process? Well, that's a good question. Actually, when teachers first start, they are evaluated every two weeks with a spot check. And the instructional leaders within each department do those spot checks. And there are several instructional leaders within each department. So the teachers are divided up so that the instructional leaders have a certain number of teachers, depending on enrollment and those, how many teachers are teaching each semester. Um, but it's manageable. And after um, the teachers have reached a certain level that they're learning more and they're improving and they're getting stronger in their teaching methods and their um, course is reflecting that, then the teachers are bumped to once a month for their evaluations. And so the two-week evaluations is not usually spanning, it's not ever spanning all of the teachers. It's just the brand new hires. Um, but it has been manageable and we see it as an opportunity to coach and to help share and reflect with our teachers. So it, it has been manageable. I mean, it is work, but we feel that it's worth it. That's great. And um, one additional question. Um, it sounds like a wonderful partnership between NCVPS and the university. Um, have you gathered any data on, on teacher feedback about the benefits of that partnership uh, for the teachers? We have not yet. We are still in our first semester of this partnership, so our students are, are not yet, have not yet completed the entire foundation course, and we have um, students who are currently in the practicing experience and have not completed that yet. Um, but we do have feedback forms that we'll be sending out at the end of the semester to gather, um, to gather their feedback. And we have received some informal comments that we've made and, and that students have made. Um, and we've discussed those with one another. We're we're already on the on the same page in terms of some things we already know we need to tweak um, to continue improving the experience for students. We don't have any hard data yet, so to speak. But once this semester is complete, we will be able to gather that from our first group of students. Great, thank you. Okay, um, that looks like all the questions we have at the moment. Um, we can continue to answer questions if you have them. So please add them into the chat. I'll go ahead. And Katie, and, yeah. I was just going to add. Sorry. Um, the the response has been um, so great through our teachers. They go through the teachers in training and practicum program, and so many teachers have said to us, you know, this has been a wonderful experience. I would love to take some of these materials back and share them with my colleagues. I would love to share this with my principal. Um, can we use these materials? And everyone, you know, some will say all teachers should see this. This was so powerful. And so we have decided to, um, NCVPS has opened up the professional learning courses to people outside of NCVPS. And as um, Jamie mentioned, one of the courses that is being offered is called Shattering the Myths of Online and Blended Learning. And I put the link in the chat box that you can check that out for more information about registration and fees, um, et cetera. But I wanted to make everyone aware of that, so you can click on that link and you can go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great. So um, just uh, want a reminder about the BBK12 Live app for um, On Demand Anywhere PD. The session will be added to that app as we move forward. And just want to thank our presenters, uh, Leslie and Jamie, today for a great presentation. Again, if anyone has a question, uh, questions or has a uh, presentation topic idea or would like to present the the future, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at one Katie Gallagher on Twitter or katie.gallagher at blackboard.com. Uh, thanks to everyone for participating in today's session. Uh, we are starting to line up those spring series sessions, so let us know. 
and you will be receiving a recording and presentation slides in a few days um, and an invitation to participate in the online PLC. So be sure to accept the invitation and begin participating. And lastly, uh, be sure to join us next Monday for Putnam County Embraces 21st Century Learning with Sam Brooks. Uh, thanks so much to uh, Leslie and Jamie, and we appreciate everyone's participation today. Thank you.